The Bitcoin price right now is going sideways after having uh, somewhat of a, a, a drop uh, yesterday. Um, we can see that it's been on a downward slope since like yesterday or Wednesday at two o'clock. Obviously, we've already talked about this slope going down here, but the whole point of this Bitcoin price analysis is to work out where the price is going now and where it's going to go in the future. And later on this video, we will talk about what my thoughts are uh, on, a, on a large time scale. But today's Bitcoin price analysis, we're going to start off at the lower time frame because I think we've got something kind of like interesting happening right here. And if we talk about this first, we might be able to predict it before it happens. It could happen during this video, uh, but I, I doubt it. But at least it, it, it's the most important key part of the video today. Before we do so, I just want to quickly skip over the, the normal stuff. The fear and greed index on uh, coin market cap is on 60. So it's it's between really fear, oh, sorry, greed and, and neutral right now, although it says neutral. Global crypto market cap is at 2.2 trillion. So it's up a little bit. Bitcoin is down 2.45% over the past week and Solana's down just about 2% as well right now. We now go over to the other fiat and greed index. You can see we're on 70 here. So one saying neutral, one saying greed. And then the normal market um, fiat and greed index is on fear once again. And the overall timeline is seeing that we've had a little bit of a dip and then we go inside with a little bit further. And then we scroll down to the VIX and then the VIX is then here it's still very much going down however we're on neutral now so we're just waiting to see really the price that the, the VIX drop beneath uh, this orange line and the VIX often drops on days when the broader market rallies and soars when um, soars when stocks plunge so what we really want if we want a bull market and we want the price of Bitcoin stocks to go up we need this to come all the way down below this orange line and if we want to be like kind of bearish and we want the, the prices to go down then we want this to soar going up so now, obviously, just quickly, let's skip back and look here. Nothing's changed. So hello and welcome to this video. My name is David Thorne. You are watching David's videos. If you're new to my channel, uh, then I make a whole bunch of different types of videos uh, ranging from programming, drone flying, uh, talking about my life in Germany. And also right now, I'm talking about the Bitcoin price and basically analyzing it on a daily basis. Now, with that said, if you are interested in looking at any of the other videos that I've made over the past month, a little bit more than a month, then you can come and look, check out this Bitcoin playlist. And it's there listed with all of the previous videos that I have made. And they've all been annotated with the ups and downs, the opens and closes of what's there. And there's a few videos that are in between. Just when I I'm possibly see maybe that there's a, a, as a movement and so on. But as we can see, the last 30 days, roughly, the Bitcoin price hasn't really gone anywhere. It's pretty much gone within inside of a range, which we'll talk, out, talk about later. Now, just before we continue, whilst we're still looking at this, I just want to advise you that I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a professional trader. I'm literally just a person sat in front of a monitor right now talking to a microphone about the, the fluctuation price or the lack of fluctuation in price of the Bitcoin, of Bitcoin. So please, anything I say here, please just take with a pinch of salt. And uh, if you are going to invest, then make sure you do your own due diligence. Any decision that you make is your decision. And I'm more than happy for you to listen to what I've got to say. But just remember, you are the one responsible for your, your money. And uh, just as a, as a side note, me and my wife, we invested into Bitcoin um, around about November uh, 2021 here where we were assuming that it was going to go up. Everyone was assuming it was going to go up then and it took a dip and we kept on buying in and in the end we gave up and we should have bought down here where it was like 15,000 but we didn't. Hey, say la vie, that's life. Um, but right now uh, the lesson that we have learned is that we always go uh, with the market, right? And the market previously is saying going up the market right now is saying going sideways, but with the likes of the uh, the Chinese, the Hong Kong ETFs coming into play soon, we could expect prices to go up. And obviously, with the Bitcoin halving that that just happened over the past uh, past week or so, then the scarcity uh, of Bitcoin has increased, obviously uh, by double, and the people selling it is not lots. BlackRock. Um, had a day, I think it was yesterday or the day before, where it hadn't bought any uh, Bitcoin whatsoever. There's a likelihood that Grayscale are selling it, BlackRock is buying it up, um, and uh, they're just waiting 
um, for, until until uh, Grayscale have sold off all of the the, the, the Bitcoin that they need to sell, uh, ready to push prices higher. I'm sure they are obviously in in they're, they're talking with one another about when they're going to buy and when they're going to sell, and that's pretty much about it. So let's now dive into the real super low timelines because. As I've said in the previous video, I've been reading uh, Jesse Livermore's books and uh, he's all about um, getting into the market. He doesn't talk about bear market or bull market. He just talks about trends going up and down and they can last a week, two weeks, three weeks and so on. But he always goes with the trend. He doesn't go with the overall market. However, sorry, let me re re rephrase that. He goes with the market direction, right? And if that is an upwards trend, he'll go with that. If it's a downwards trend, he'll go with that. But if he sees a overbought or oversold signal, these are what he calls our danger signals, then he will change his mind on a flip of a coin, basically. And if when you read the book, you'll notice that he has made his most money when other people are on the assumption it's going to go further. And uh, he has seen these danger signals and analyzed them over a long time, especially price movements. And he will only get into a stock when he sees that it is completely either oversold or it's completely overbought. And he very much likes to get into trades at pivot points, specific points like this and like this and like this. And he says that if a price is going to go through a pivot point, if a price is going to breach that pivot point, then it will more than likely breach it by good amounts. Now, if it doesn't breach it, it will come down and it might come back a little bit, play around and then go down. But it should at least go, go through a little bit, come back and retest it and then down. So the whole point, the whole point that he's, he's talking about is that the pivot points tend to be the most movement there. But the time to, to get into a position is when it goes sideways and you see some form of consolidation uh, like we do here. And here he builds up his, uh, his uh, orders in a range, right? And he picks the range that he wants to buy through and uh, he splits his, his orders down into 20%, 20%, 20% and 40%. And he'll, he'll keep the 40% for that final burst. So, but he only ever trades if he puts in a trade here to sell, to sell uh, in this case Bitcoin, then he will only put his next trade when he puts his trade at a premium, basically. So he will he will only do another trade if the price moves in that direction, and he will only do the next twenty percent if the price moves in that direction again. And when it does come through the pivot point, let's just call this the pivot point. He'll he'll see that, but he wants. He wants to see it come and correct and he wants to see it come and test it. And when he's happy that it can rally once again and go down, that's when he will put his final 40% in here. And this is the main move. And he's all about letting it run as well, but he's all about taking profits. So he's he's a firm believer that if in order to make money, you actually have to take profits, you know, just seeing the money on paper. And if you've put a trade in and you see it electronically today, you see that how much money you've, the profit you've got, you only actually see the profits is when you actually, you remove that money from your trading account and place it back in your bank account. That are, they are profits. The, the, if you've got money in your trading account, that is not profits, that is just liquidity for you to e enter another trade, or as he calls it, possible credit for your margin that you use at a later stage. So have to think about yourself is uh, the only time that you actually make money by trading is when you transfer that money from your trading account to your standard account. So this is something that we, we really want to take into to consideration here. And what we see right now is we see that the price of Bitcoin, it's, it's attempting to break this one line, right? And it's attempted it, let's say three times. Let's, let's class this as one time here. And we, as it came down, it had a market reaction right? The market reaction was just to come back down again. It had a market reaction which went back up, but it couldn't make the highs of this. It couldn't come any further and it had a reaction back down again and it came back up, but it couldn't make a new high and it came back down. So what we're saying, what we're looking for here is, is the market, are there, are there now a lack of, uh, a lack of buyers? And here we know there are buyers here, we know there are buyers here and we know there's buyers here. But the question is, because we see a light red candle right now, 
we can see it's moving through the order book with minimal with minimal volume which means there isn't really a market there right now it might be very difficult to uh, to sell your bitcoin at that price and get the price that you want uh, because we if the buyers are here they if the buyers were here and they're now here we should expect to see on the next candle the price zoom through so if we move into the 5 minute timeline we can see that a a maroon a maroon candle i've changed the 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 dj trading indicators by the way that a red candle now only shows or red and green candles now only show if the the the, the upper wick is less than 8% of the whole body and here and the open and close of the candle so the open has to be wickless basically so the bottom if it goes up if it's a green candle the bottom has to have no wick and if it's going down the top has to have no wick and the the wick on the bottom if it's going down can only be 8% of that of the actual wick and it has to be of high volume so if you don't see any any red or green candles anymore it's because I've changed it uh, but purple now is the, the the strength of a of a selling here. So we we can see right now that the price the the, the people in the markets are are trying to push the price down even further. And but we can see here that uh, this is this is a potential area where the sellers were, and we can see the potential place where the sellers were up here, and then up here. And at no point really have the sellers, have the buyers been able to push that price back to this one position. So we can see that there isn't there isn't any strength. There's no one really buying it there. And we, we know where the sellers are because the sellers just keep moving their position down. And this this very, very much confirms what, what Je Jesse Livermore is saying is that you sell here as your first position, right? And if you believe the market is going to go down, then don't make another position up here because that's the, the market's just gone in the wrong direction here. It's going in exactly the wrong direction. So you really, if you if you believe in your trade, then the next trade you get in should be lower, right? Because this should be out of profit now. So once this one trade is out of profit, then you can get into the next trade. And when this one is out of profit again, you can get into the next trade. And if, it, if this is your 20, 20, 20, then, and you're assuming that the price is going to break this one pivot point, then the final 40% would be here when it comes and retests it. But really, you'd only want to know it there when it actually comes back down again, because it could just be the pivot point it, as is its now support, and that is then the price is going to rally back up again. So these are these are key things that you've got to take into account is when do you get into a trade and yes I know economics says buy low and sell high but you you need to speculate if you've bought here on the assumption that the price is going to rally up really high and then it comes back down again you buy here and it doesn't get any higher and then you buy here and now it dumps down you've not made any money because you couldn't sell it now if you had sold it here and then you bought it back down here and sold it here and, and then bought it back down again here and sold it here and bought it and sold it here that's perfectly fine too right but really if you know the market is going to go down and it's going to come down to lower prices then really you should have shorted it here and then shorted it here again shorted it here again because at least these prices are lower and it is going in the direction of what your the market is going and what your intention was and so why why get into a losing trade this is the the, the method methodology it, yes you want to get it as low as possible but he also says don't average down onto a trade so as we're looking at this if if um you 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 let's just say that Let's just say that you bought uh, you bought in here, all right, and then it goes down. You're like, oh, I can buy more, um, so because now I can get it even lower, and then it comes up a little bit, and I buy more. And so, what you're trying to do is you you're trying to get this average here to come down to this, so you've got a lower average now, and then it goes up and back down again. You're like, oh no, I I can buy some more now with the hope that it's going up. This is this is hope now. That you're you're hoping that the market will go in the opposite direction of what you think it's going, and right now that you could be correct in saying that the market is going to go up. But let's take another zoom out and let's have a look at the 15 minute at uh, the 15 minute time frame. The we we've got a, a better chance of going with with the trend, and the trend kind of says going down right now, and we don't really have uh, 
you you could turn around and say okay the the movement here is is going up but the overall movement of of this if you look at the bottom is kind of a range coming down so we might expect it to come up here to come back down again but really you you can't say that there is a a upwards trend really until it comes and breaks breaks this line here and then makes a new high in going up so on a 15 minute basis you could say that the market is going up but really we've seen it's come down from a higher a higher level it's corrected it's rallied again up here it's rallied again up here and now it's coming back down again so it would be wrong it would be wrong of you to think that it's going back up now if there is a lot of people coming into the market then you could expect that to happen but if we come out to a 30 minute level here we obviously can see that that the price is being forced down the the higher time frames the higher moving averages here are saying it's going down and even on this one we can see it's going down and uh, yeah so the, you know just go with the market the market is the master and if we zoom back in again to the five minute time frame we can see that it's once again testing this one level so we look at this and it's testing this one level again and it, it tested it here it's tested it here and here and here and here and then it broke through and it came back up again all right but this was a, a rejection so if we are expecting for the price to come any lower we would whoops if we're expecting for the price to come any lower we would expect for it to come and test this point here so we would expect it to come and test this here and then if it has got strength and it gets rejected then we'd want to test it again and so on now if it does just break through this liquidity zone here we would then expect it to come and test this next pivot point all right because it it, it pivoted here before and it's, it's always it's perfectly allowed to come down and to test this one zone before it rallies back up again so just because it's tried it and it's failed a couple of times doesn't mean to say that it can't beat it you know it can't do it on the final approach here and that when it does come down to this that might just be enough to show where the buyers are and the buyers come in and push the price all the way up but right now we should be very very skeptical about higher prices we should be cautious in the event that it does happen and there's nothing stopping you from changing your mind you should always go with the market and if it just does suddenly volume suddenly starts coming in like these blue candles here we saw volume coming in but the, the price moved higher but it just didn't have any strength it, it died out after a while and there was a rally going up here but there was no strength to push it through this area of of selling basically because all the sellers were here and they didn't the price couldn't even get to this higher point because the selling was there and then we saw again where the selling was in, in this area here so i'm guessing there's lots of selling there because we've seen selling here as well so now we've seen selling here but the question is 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 there buying here and is there buying here ready to push the price back up again these are thoughts that just go through my mind now so but right now i i am well the the moving averages are telling us that the price is lower than the 200 or 300 ema it's lower than the 50 it's lower than the 15 and it's lower than the 8 at the moment it's trying to move above but a light green candle shows it's got no uh, no no volume and this red candle ha says it's got next to no volume and we saw some form of of uh, uh, indecision about it but there was a rally up and down uh, already so really in order for the price to get out this in order for the price to get out this one zone we need to see a candle uh, a candle going up obviously and then a bigger candle going up and then a bigger candle going up and after this we need to see we need to see like the that, that major candle pushing through otherwise it's just going to get rejected from this one selling uh, zone uh, once again so this is this is something to take into account but if i had to if i had to put money on a trade right now and, and i wanted to know whether or not i'm actually going to make money well i would put a trade in here i would put a trade in here and i would probably place another trade here and place another trade here and then just go in big here because well actually that's not true the last one the last one is not true you would want 
you want to wait to it to come here but let, let's look where the liquidity isn't right the, there's definitely no liquidity here right in these candles it just zooms straight through so we know that there is a little bit of resistance here we saw a possible area here where it, where it managed to bounce here before but we saw it also managed to bounce there and then here again so we would expect if the price can come through these that there's there's lots of if there isn't any buying pressure here if there isn't and it's all gone then we would expect it to just zoom straight through this line and then the buying power would come in here so um now does this let's just let's just look at this at a higher a higher level is there enough buying pressure in this zone here ready for the weekend to uh, push it back up again above this um, on a, this is a 30 minute time frame so or or is this over the weekend are we going to see it bounce down 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 and that takes it all the way to sunday and then sunday you never know this could be then the dump or it could be ready for tuesday or whatever when the hong kong chinese etfs come into play and if they don't bring any money and grayscale and uh, blackrock just continue to 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 manipulate the market if that's what's happening then we could expect prices going down uh, all the way down to say 56,000 or we could see the uh, the range just continuing back up back up here again so this is all I want to say is that be vigilant of these moves um, and this is how this is how, what I think about it and I would really advise reading some books about Jesse Livermore because it's very enlightening to see how uh, the most successful trader of all time, of all history, uh, managed to do it on multiple times. I mean, literally every single four or five years, he managed to, to make huge amounts of money from nothing once again and using exactly the same rules. And he managed to always lose his money by breaking the rules that he had, using his emotions, using speculation and so on. So his rules that he had to make money worked repetitively every single time for him but it was his own emotions his own uh it was the biggest problem he had was when he listened to people he was easily let's let's call him he was easily biased into believing them so he sounds like a very honest person and he believed them he trusted them and so he found that to not listen to these people and stay very, very private. And when he did stay very, very private, he made his money. And when he stuck to his initial conviction, his initial thought, he went in hard. And uh, that's what he learned, is that why didn't he trust his initial conviction? And if he did trust it, then go in even harder to prove it. With that said, thank you very much for listening. Um, like I said, please come and check out uh, the rest of the videos on my channel and uh, if you don't like them then like I said I won't be offended if you just scroll on by uh, other than that thank you very much uh, for watching and uh, stay vigilant uh, remember to do your own due diligence before you make a trade and uh, Bitcoin's going sideways right now there's a high likelihood it might um, there's a high likelihood it might go down again but there's also an equal likelihood that it will go sideways too I don't think we're going to see any big, big movement to higher prices within the next three months, especially with the likes of possible hype rates or possible no hype, no, no rate cuts this year, and with other companies having bad earnings and so on. But, and with the geopolitical situation, I can't see there being this massive surge in, in prices that I can see us sitting around a little bit for a couple of months. Okay, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in uh, the next video.